Hello and welcome to Are You Becoming a Grumpy Old Git Test? Hello, are you grumpy? Are you becoming a windbag? Oh. oh dear, can you see that you're becoming a grumpy old git? Oh no, do you find yourself starting to repeat, repeat, repeat yourself in conversations with people? Is the world being taken over by police constables who are beginning to look very young and small in stature? Yes this and many other similar telltale signs may indicate that you are becoming a grumpy old git. Complete the following test, test to see how many indicators apply to you. Just pop a tick down on a bit of paper but don't forget the purpose of this test is mostly humorous and to help you becoming, help you avoid becoming a grumpy old git. <sighs> Firstly, you have no idea what an old git is. Most certainly, you do not believe it relates to you. Spelling. Yes, spelling. You're obsessed by spelling. It's something that's really important to you. And you delight in telling everybody you know how to spell. And point out, you delight in pointing out when others can't. You would never ever spell humour the American way without the U in it. You are deadly serious, so deadly serious that you now find that you can sit through a whole comedy programme on the television without laughing. No titter, but plenty of tut tuts. You are instead becoming increasingly obsessed about talking about litter on your local streets and even more totally obsessed in spending time in your garden shed. When talking, you start by complaining about the youth of today. You will, for example, say that youth today can't spell. They always spell humour the American way without a U in it. Oh, if you... Ah, and, of course, you like to start other sentences with, well, we know our day... You'll say things like, such as, in our day, we had decent comedies on the television, not like the rubbish of today. <laughs> Humorous. Your anecdotes are getting longer and longer and longer and longer, and you can't help repeating yourself. You always like to dominate discussions by talking louder than anyone else, lengthily describing things in a dull, monotone voice and people's eyes start to glaze over as you speak. You wave your hands around with enthusiasm as you speak. Your saliva begins to run as you get excited and you accidentally spray people with spittle. Ha! <sighs> you find daytime TV so rewarding and in a dull, monotonous, loud voice talk at length about programmes such as Bargain Hunt. You take pride in being able to talk about any subject matter and delight in embarrassingly giving far too much information about topics. For example, you will go in great depths about the time you went to hospital and a nurse clamped your willy to enable the doctor to examine the inside of your plumbing by putting a tiny camera up your willy. Or you tell them your favourite joke. Why is Mrs. Claus so grumpy? Because he only comes once a year and it's down the chimney. When you get a little bit excited, you can't help interrupting people when they're talking. And when you're in a good mood, you then start giving your advice about how to go about or doing or making things or telling them about your specialist subject. Sheds. Oh, oh sheds. Yes, you love sheds. You would like to hibernate for the whole of the winter in a shed. You like to play Sudoku a lot in your shed. That's the only place you get plenty of peace and quiet. In your shed, you keep your own mug in pride of place. On a shelf alongside your many specialist car cleaning materials. 
black stuff to make your tires look brand new and worn out old tires and special bird excrement remover and 12 different types of car wash and polishing products you really need these products as you wash your car most days and sometimes three times on Sundays Ugh, really three times on Sundays yes and you chose your car for its large robust boxy shape rather than its 0 to 60 yeah talking of the 60s back in the 1960s you drove a sleek aerodynamic twin cylinder bubble car tiny so tiny compared to that bulky thing you drive now and when encountering other motorists you like to wind down their window and you say do you have a driving license to drive that thing <sighs> you put up a sign in your window to alert other motorists see if i can find it here that you are a grumpy old git yes yes you do here it is oh i thought i lost it for a minute elderly driver beware thank you yes that's you put up the notice to remind them and you put a notice up in your front windscreen one on each side window and one in the rear you really need to alert other motorists that you are grumpy old git you don't have many friends but when dealing with others you always know best and you never miss an opportunity to moan you don't have many friends nah but why is the sea so very grumpy well wouldn't you be grumpy if you had crabs on your bottom <laughs> if you believe in rigid yes you believe in rigid and firm boundaries in your domestic life and certainly zero tolerance to crabs you enjoy running around the house turning off the lights for economic rather than romantic reasons you're always overwhelmingly negative and your overused phrase catchphrases are oh no what have you done now and you should have switched that light off tut, 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 tut. punctuate your conversations with disturbing frequency tut, 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 tut. you should have switched that light off and loads of sighs oh no tut, 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 tut. you have no-go areas in your life the only time you ever enter the kitchen at home is to advise your partner that you believe something is burning is something burning there the only time you say thank you is when you're being sarcastic or to make a point i'll oh, thank you for not burning my toast dear at night time you dream you dream yes you dream about prunes oh you know you just got to believe in your prune, prunes your dreams your dreams about prunes apart from dreaming about prunes the only thing you do twice in a night is to go to the toilet or five times if you're dreaming about prunes you have got to really believe in your dreams you look out the window at night and you think huh why is the moon so grumpy and then you realize ah oh, it's only going through its phases last night for a change you very unusually went to bed feeling happy but then happy didn't like it so you rolled over the other side of the bed feeling grumpy well i never when you look at your face in the morning in the mirror you realize that you haven't laughed or smiled in weeks and you are really pleased about it you know your body is starting to carry excess weight it's not just under the bags under your eyes you're starting to sag everywhere any moments of happiness that you've experienced have been very brief and fleeting you slam the door in the faces of carol singers as their expressions of joy are just too much for you for christ's sake when you get dressed in the morning you like to ensure that you're wearing both a belt and braces and you like to put a knot in your handkerchief for the rare occasion you might go shopping to remind yourself that you must forget something you try to insist that shopping is a duty to be undertaken by your partner although you don't mind sitting in your car playing sudoku whilst they're out there shopping without your wallet at their disposal mind you which is at all times safely tucked away in your pocket oh yes it is <sighs> whenever you return home from going out 
after unfurling umbrella you have to straight away share not just two but at least three gripes with your partner you have a lot of room in your home but although you're you're there you make sure you're grumpy in it but you haven't got any room in your cabinet medicine cabinet medicines fall down on the floor when you open the door and damn it they still haven't invented a tablet to stop you being grumpy when you stoop to pick something up such as your tablets you try to think of other things you can do whilst you're down there <sighs> yes uh, as well as a, a think of a novel excuse to have a, to go in your shed again if you ever do have to go shopping on your own you never leave home without your umbrella of course and tying a knot in your hanky to remind you not to buy certain things you will always 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 make a point of buying something that's caught your eye and completely non-essential and then you'll deliberately forget to buy some of those paper tissues to blow your nose on and toilet paper of course you also no longer buy green bananas just in case when out at a cafe or restaurant you enjoy sending the food back with retorts such as where's your food hygiene certificate and even my wife can burn toast better than you oh <sighs> you puff yourself up and you are indeed the incredible sulk whilst out and about you feel absolutely nothing at the sight of a newborn baby or a puppy the police constables that you see occasionally or quite rarely seem to be getting younger and looking like young children to you ha huh, what is the world coming to ha huh, dear oh dear you advise any non-white person you encounter or, it, or even if they happen to be a non-white police officer, that you believe them to be a foreigner, just because they've got a different colour skin. But if everybody in your world seems to be becoming foreigners, as you are beginning to feel like every other human being was put on this earth to irritate you, even you are beginning to irritate me. I got this birthday card today, it's my birthday, but I'm not happy about it. And it, look what it says. Here's an annual reminder to remind you that you're a grumpy old git. Anyway, about time I say goodbye. Goodbye! How do I switch this bloody thing off? Bloody rah, moan, 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 tut, 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 spray. Pfft.